Welcome to NPTEL online course on machine learning and deep learning fundamentals and applications. In my last class, I briefly introduce the principles of artificial neural networks and also I highlighted the importance of the bias input and the activation function. In that lecture, I explained the concept of XOR logic which is a non-linearly separable pattern classification problem and for this I design one artificial neural network. Today I am going to discuss about another popular artificial neural network that is the radial basis function artificial neural network. In case of the RBF, the output depends on the, the distance between the input vector and the stored vector. And today's class, I will be again discussing the XOR problem that is the XOR logic which is a non-linearly separable pattern classification problem and how to handle that problem by considering the radial basis function. And in the first class, I explain one important concept that is the Covers theorem. If the training samples are not linearly separable in a low dimensional space, then what I can do? I can apply some non-linear transformation techniques to project the low dimensional data into a high dimensional feature space. If I do these projections into a high dimensional feature space, then the training samples will be linearly separable. That is the concept of the Covers theorem. So now let us discuss about the radial basis function artificial neural network. So today I am going to discuss about the radial basis functions networks. So already I told you in case of the RBF the radial basis function neural network the output depends on on the distance of the input vector of the input from a given stored vector from a given stored vector in the figure also I am showing that principle so suppose if I consider the vector this vector is 1 this vector is approximated by three vectors. So, I am showing three green colored vectors. The vector 1 is represented by considering these three green vectors. So, also I can write in a RBF uh, neural network, we have the hidden layers and the hidden layer uses neurons with RBF activation functions. So, I can write the hidden layers hidden layers uses neurons with rbf So that means the radial basis function neural networks has hidden layers. Hidden layer uses neurons with RBF activation function. And one output node which is used to combine, one output node is used to combine linearly. the outputs of the hidden neurons. So, you can see in the RBF uh, networks, we have a hidden layer 
which uses neurons with RBF activation function. And we have one output node which is used to combine linearly the output of the hidden neurons. In this figure uh, what already I have explained, I have a vector, vector is 1. The output of the vector 1 is interpolated using the 3 green vectors. So, in the figure you can see I have 3 green vectors. The vector 1 is interpolated using the 3 green vectors and each vector gives a contribution that depends on its weight and on its distance from the point 1. So, that means again I am repeating each vector gives a contribution that depends on its weight and on its distance from the point 1. In this case the weights are like this W1 is less than W2, W3, W3 is less than W2. So, the weights are like this in this figure. So, this is the fundamental concept of the radial basis function. So, the output depends on the distance of the input from a given stored vector. So, let us now discuss about RBF architecture, the radial basis function artificial neural network architecture. So, move to the next slide, the RBF architecture. So, suppose these are the input nodes x1, x2, xd. So, this is for actually the vector x. x is a d dimensional vector. So, I have d number of input nodes. After this, I am considering the activation functions phi1, phi2 like this these are the activation functions corresponding to the hidden layer. I have a hidden layer and I have also one output layer. So, this is the output node and from the output node I am getting the output y. So, now I have to show the interconnections between these neurons. So, these interconnections I have to show. So, all the interconnections I am showing and I have to show the interconnections between the hidden layer and the output node. So, I am combining the outputs of the hidden layer in the output node and the weights are already I have explained the weights are W1, W2, Wm. These are the weights, connecting weights. So, this is one structure of the RBF artificial neural network. So, in the RBF activation function, you can see we are considering this is the hidden layer. So, this is the hidden layer and we are considering the activation functions phi 1, phi 2. So, these are the RBF activation functions and what will be the output layer we are considering. This is the output layer. In this case, we are considering the linear activation function, the linear activation function. So, corresponding to this uh, network, I can get the output y that is nothing but the linear combinations I have to consider. So, the distance between x and t1 that is the input vector is x and t1 is the target vector that is the stored vector wm phi m x. I am not giving the uh, vector sign here x is a vector t is a also vector. So, I am not 
giving the vector sign here. So, in this expression this is x minus t that is a distance. So, we are considering the Euclidean distance the distance of x x is a vector the d dimensional vector from the target vector the target vector is t the target vector is t. So, you can see how we can determine the output corresponding to this RBF architecture and we are considering the distance between the input vector and the target vector. So, what type of phi we can consider? So, let us move to the next slide the types of phi. So, what types of phi we can consider? One popular is multi quadrix multi quadrix activation function. So, that is phi r is equal to r square plus c square 1 by 2. So, c is greater than 0 and the r is nothing but the distance between x and t that is the r. So, this activation function we can use that is the multi quadrix. Another one is inverse multi quadrix inverse multi quadrix. So, activation function will be phi r 1 by r square plus c square 1 by 2 for c is greater than 0. And number 3 that is a Gaussian function So, in most of the cases it is used it is a very popular activation function. So, phi r is nothing but the exponential function minus r square 2 sigma square and sigma greater than 0. So, these are some popular activations function used in the RBF neural network. Now, let us discuss about the example that already I have discussed in my last class that is the X or classification problem that is a non-linearly separable pattern classification problem. So, how to consider that problem by considering this radial basis function artificial neural network. So, move to the next slide. So, one example we are considering now and that is nothing but the X or problem. So, you know in case of the XOR input suppose is X and output is suppose Y. So, corresponding to this combination 0 0 0 1 1 0 and 1 1. So, you can see the output is 0 here 0 1 is 1 1 0 is 1 and 1 1 is 0. So, these are the outputs corresponding to the combinations the input combinations 0 0 0 1 1 0 and 1 1. So, this is the XOR logic. So, that can be shown in the figure also. So, input space. So, how to show the input space? So, we are considering these two variables corresponding to x one is x 1 another one is x 2 and I have to consider the points. So, this is one point this is another point, this is another point and this is another point. So, that is actually the 0 0, this is 1 0, this is 1 1 and it is 0 1. This is the input space. So, what about the output space? The output space
so I can show the output y you have seen that output we have two outputs only one is 0 another one is out 1 so now our problem is now what is the problem now construct or the design an RBF pattern classifier such that so the conditions are like this corresponding to this 0 0 and 1 1 these input combinations that should be mapped to 0 and that is corresponding to the class C1 and corresponding to this input combination that is 1 0 and 0 1 it should be mapped to 1 and that is corresponding to the another class the class is C2. So that means it is a two class problem it is a two class pattern classification problem. So how this problem I can consider by considering the RBF uh, network let us explain in the next slide. So in the Fisher space that is actually the in the hidden layer. So that is in the hidden layer. So phi 1 we are considering the distance between x and the target vector is t1. So phi 1 is the activation function in the RBF network. So it is nothing but the exponential x minus t1 whole square. So in all these cases I am not giving the vector sign. So I am not showing the vector sign and similarly the phi 2 is x minus t2 is equal to e to the power minus x minus t2 square. So this we are considering and what is t1? t1 is nothing but 1 1 that is the target uh, vector and the t2 is 0 0. So these are two target vectors. So corresponding to this I can show the decision boundary and also the, the outputs I can show. So it is in the feature space phi 1 and phi 2. So suppose this value is suppose 1.0 and this value is suppose 1.0 this is 0.5 this this is also 0.5 and I can show the decision boundary the decision boundary will be so this is the decision boundary So I have to do the mapping. So after the mapping what I will be getting the points you can see here. I will be getting one point here, another point I will be getting here maybe here and another point I may get here. These three points I am getting after mapping. So this point corresponds to the input inputs are 0 1 and 1 0. So for these two combinations I am getting this output in the Fisher space. This output I am getting corresponding to the input 1 1 and this output I am getting for the input 0 0. So all these outputs I am getting in the Fisher space. 
and this is what this is the decision boundary so you can see when we map into the feature space that is in the hidden layer these two classes c1 and c2 they will be linearly separable so a linear classifier with phi 1 x and phi 2 x as inputs can be used to solve the XOR problem. So, I am repeating this. So, when I map into the Fisher space, these two classes C1 and C2 will be linearly separable. So, what I can consider now? So, I can consider a linear classifier with phi 1 x and phi 2 x as inputs. Uh, they, uh, these inputs can be used to solve the XOR problem. So, how to get these green colored points that is the output points I can show these computations in the next slide. So, let us move to the next slide. So, we consider the activation function phi 1 x that is nothing but e to the power minus x minus t 1 and phi 2 x we considered e to the power minus x minus t2 square. So, we consider these two activation functions. And what are my target vectors? t1 is equal to 0, 0 transpose and t2 is 1, 1 transpose. So, now I am considering all the four cases. So, number 1 case x is input combination is 0 and 0. How to do this computation? x minus t1 will be 0 0 minus 0 0. So, that will be equal to 0 0 and that will be equal to 0 square plus 0 square that will be 0 and x minus t2 will be 0 0 minus t2 is 1 comma 1 that will be equal to minus 1 comma minus 1 that will be equal to 1 plus 1 that will be root 2 this is for the input combination 0 0 so, I am getting the output 0 and root 2 and corresponding to this what is phi 1 x the phi 1 x will be e to the power minus 0 and that will be equal to 1 and what is phi 2 x the phi 2 x will be e to the power minus 2 and that will be equal to 0 0.135 I am getting this one. So, that means I am getting 1 and 0 0.135 let us consider the second input input is x 0 1 and corresponding to this you can determine x minus t 1 so that will be equal to 1 that you can do the computation and x minus t 2 that will be equal to 1 so corresponding to this phi 1 x will be e to the power minus 1 that will be 0 0.367 and phi 2 x will be e to the power minus 1 0 0.367 so I am getting this and similarly 3 number 3 x 1 0 we can consider and also the number 4 we can consider corresponding to this x 1 0 
the phi 1 x will be 0 0.367 and the phi 2 x will be 0 0.367 and finally, for the combination x 1 1 phi 1 x will be 0 0.135 and phi 2 x will be 1. So, in the tabular form I can show like this. So, x is my input and this phi 1 x and phi 2 x. So, in the tabular form I can show like this. So, for the combination 0 0 this is 1 and this is 0 0.135 for the combination 0 1 this is 0 0.367 and this is 0 0.367 for the combination 1 0 this is 0 0.367 and 0 0.367 and finally, for the combination 1 and 1, this is 0 0.135 and this is 1. So, we are getting these combinations. So, corresponding to this as shown in my previous slide, I will be getting the outputs in the Fisher space. So, it is phi 1, phi 2. So, if I consider this point as 1.0 and this is 1, this is 0.5, this is suppose 0.5 and this is the decision boundary. So, from this table corresponding to the first condition, the condition is 0, 0. So, I am getting the output 1 and 0 0.135. So, that means I will be getting a point somewhere here. Similar to these two conditions, I will be getting one point in the Fisher space and that may be here because it is 0 0.367 and 0 0.367. So, I will be getting this point. So, this point corresponds to the input 0 0. This point corresponds to the input 0 1 and 1 0. And finally, for the last one 1 1, I will be getting this is the point will be something like this here. So, phi 1 x will be uh, 0 0.135 and phi 2 x is 1. So, this corresponds to the input 1 1. So, I can get like this. So, that means after the mapping into the Fisher space, the classes C 1 and C 2 will be linearly separable. So, in this case, uh, this will be the class C1 and this side is class C2 and you can see the decision boundary between these two classes. So, you can see how I can solve the X or problem. So, corresponding to this case, now I want to show the architecture of the RBF network. So, move to the next slide. So, now I want to show the RBF neural network for the x or problem. RBF network for x or problem. So, phi 1 is nothing but phi 1 x minus t 1 is nothing but e to the power minus x minus t 1 square that already I have explained and phi 2 is phi 2 x minus t 2 we are finding the distance between x and t 1 and x and t 2 x minus t 2 square and corresponding to this you know the target vectors are 1 1 and t2 is 0 0 because it is a two class problem. Now, the architecture will be because I have two inputs 
x1 and x2 two inputs we are considering and the target is t1 t2 and we have one output node so this is one output node so i want to show the interconnections here and we are also considering one bias input to the output node that is y i am getting the output y here so this weight is minus 1 and this weight is minus 1 so what is the output y y is nothing but minus e to the power x minus t1 minus e to the power because we are considering the negative weight minus minus we are considering minus 1 minus 1 x minus t2 square plus 1 so that will be my output now the conditions for the classification is if y is greater than 0 then class 1 or i can say c1 otherwise class 0 so this condition i can consider for the classification so this is the final output i am getting so here you can see and how i can consider the rbf neural network for the problem of xor logic now let us discuss about the rbf network parameters rbf network parameters what are the parameters of a rbf network so what we have to learn for a rbf neural network with a given architecture the first one i can say the first parameter is the center center of the rbf activation function the second parameter is the spread of the spread of of the gaussian rbf activation function so for gaussian rbf function we have to determine the spread also rbf activation function and also we have to learn the weights from the hidden layer to the output layer so these are the parameters we have to learn so there are different learning algorithms which can be used for learning the rbf network parameters so i will briefly explain how to learn these parameters now i will explain how to learn the rbf uh, network parameters so one is the center the another one is the spread of the gaussian rbf activation function and the connecting weights so these three parameters we have to learn the center of the rbf activation function and the spread of the gaussian rbf activation functions can be learned using the k-means algorithm so one simple technique is the center of the rbf activation function and the spread of the gaussian activation function that can be learned by simple k means algorithm
now regarding the weights how to learn the weights so weights can be computed by one popular technique that is the pseudo inverse method so for this what we can consider the pseudo inverse inverse method method we can apply for learning the weights so this pseudo inverse method i have explained in my lecture of uh, regression if you see my lecture on regression i have applied this principle the pseudo inverse method to learn the weights so let us discuss about how to learn the weights in my next slide learning of weights so now how to learn the weights by the pseudo inverse method so for an example for an example xi is a vector input vector is xi and di is the desired output so corresponding to this output of the network i can write in this form output of the network the output of the network is suppose y x i w1 w1 is the weight connecting the hidden neurons and the output neuron x i minus T1 plus so I am not showing the in between weights so final weight is WM pi M X I minus TM so we are considering m number of weights that is that is the connecting weight between the hidden layer and the output node so we would like y xi should be equal to di so that means one is the actual output another one is the desired output so di is the desired output so we would like y x i is equal to di for each example that means the meaning is w1 phi 1 x i minus t1 plus wm phi m x i minus tm should be equal to di that is the desired output corresponding to the input input is xi so this expression i can write in the matrix from so this expression i can write in the matrix from phi 1 xi minus t1 I am x minus x i minus t m and we are considering the weight vector as w1 w2 w m and that is equal to d i so that means this expression i am writing in the matrix form like this so if i consider all the examples now if i consider all the examples now then this equation i can write uh, together by considering all the examples so let us move to the next slide for all the examples at the same time we are considering now
So, corresponding to this my previous equation I can write in this form phi 1 x 1 t 1 phi m x 1 minus t m So, in between I am not showing. So, finally I am getting phi 1 x n t 1 phi m x n minus t m So, all the examples I am considering together the weight vector is w1 w2 because we are considering m number of weights wm and what are the outputs the outputs are d1 d2 dn so this equation we can solve by pseudo inverse method that already I have explained in my lecture on regression. So, I can employ the pseudo inverse technique. So, I can, I can employ pseudo inverse technique to determine the weights. So, I can apply another technique that is the, the gradient method I can apply the learning by gradient method. So, move to the next slide learning by by gradient method. So, we can apply the gradient descent method for finding the centers spread and the weights by minimizing the squared error. So, I have to minimize the minimize the squared error E is equal to 1 by 2 y x is, is actually nothing but and the actual output and d is the desired output. So, this we can determine the minim, minimize the squared error. After this, I have to update by considering the gradient descent algorithm. So, update for update for the first for the center. So, delta T j that is we are determining the delta T j that is the gradient T j delta e divided by delta t j. So, just we are differentiating the error with respect to t j that is the center of the cluster and also we can determine the spread. So, eta is nothing but the learning rate parameter. So, it can the eta can control the learning rate and simply we are doing the differentiation and finally the weights weight also delta w i j is eta i j So, you can see we can apply this gradient descent algorithm for learning the parameters. This is another technique. So, now let us compare the RBF network with multilayer neural network. So, in case of the architecture point of view, RBF network have one single hidden layer. So, already I have explained in case of the RBF neural network, we have only one hidden layer. So, single hidden layer is there. But if I consider the feed forward neural network, 
they may have more hidden layers. So, more hidden layers in case of the feed forward neural network. And what about the neuron model? So, in the RBF, the neuron model of the hidden neurons is different from the one of the output nodes. So, you can see that is the neuron model corresponding to the hidden neuron is different from the output nodes. In case of the feed forward neural network, hidden and the output neurons share a common neuron model. But in case of the RBF uh, network, the neuron model of the hidden neurons is different from the one of the output nodes. Another point is the hidden layer of the RBF is non-linear and output layer of the RBF is linear. Because in case of the RBF network, we are considering the RBF activation function in the hidden layer, which is a non-linear function. But the output layer we are considering is linear. In case of the feed forward neural network, hidden and the output layers of the feed forward network are usually non-linear because we use the sigmoid function. So, if you remember that one, uh, already I have discussed about the feed forward neural network. In that case, we considered the sigmoid activation function which is a non-linear activation function. So, this is the comparison with the multilayer neural network. And another point is the activation functions. So, in case, of, in case of the RBF neural network, we have to compute the Euclidean distance between the input vector and the center of the unit. So, that means in case of the RBF, we have to compute the Euclidean distance between the input vector and the center of that unit, particular unit. But in case of the feed forward neural networks, what we need to consider, we compute the inner product. So, we compute the inner product of the input vector and the weight vector of that particular neuron. So, that is another difference between the radial basis function neural network and the feed forward neural network. And corresponding to this approximation, RBF neural network using Gaussian functions construct local approximation to nonlinear IO mapping. Feed forward neural network construct global approximation to nonlinear IO mapping. So, in case of the RBF neural network, we are considering the local approximation. So, local approximation, but in case of the feed forward uh, neural network, we are considering the global approximation to nonlinear IO mapping. So, this is the difference between the feed forward neural network and the radial basis function neural network. So, in this class, I explain the concept of the radial basis function neural network and you can see the difference between the feed forward neural network and the radial basis function neural network. And for explaining the concept of the RBF network, I considered the problem of XOR classification. That is a non-linearly separable classification problem. So, let me stop here today. Thank you.